I'm going to make this day a tribute to all of my grandchildren. It's a day for my, who they call me Mimi, Mimi's famous mac and four cheese for them as if they were here. Uh, this is a recipe long, long time ago I started making and I would just cook some pasta on the stove which I did for us today. I would start out cooking way back then little elbow macaronis, then we progressed the gemelli, and then we we took the little twist kind. So today I did a little different. My grandkids aren't here, so I went and made some penne whole wheat pasta. I already cooked it for about seven minutes on the stove in boiling water. And I'm taking it off right now. We may have to return it back because as you see, we have a whole host of ingredients. And yes, most of them are cheese. We do want to add a cup of our half and half to our pasta. And we're going to add some butter, half a stick, cream cheese, yes, half Actually, we've got about four ounces of everything in here. And then I've got my cheddar cheese. And today I'm using Swiss cheese. You can use whatever cheeses you want to make it four cheeses. That's the beauty of my famous mac and cheese. In my bowl here, I've got good old Pecorino Romano, half a cup. And I do have a half a teaspoon of salt. A little bit of salt is important. And that's all that I would do for my grandchildren is stir this all together until it melts and everything just, the pasta just gets wonderfully and beautifully coated. Yes, by the way, I am wearing a set that one of my grandchildren, when they were very little, made me. And I'm not going to name the one because truthfully, I would be so afraid that I got the wrong one. I think I know who it is, but if you watch it and you know who it is, give me a call. <laughs> it's always nice to have grandchildren do things for you because you're always doing things for them. And when they make things for you like a little necklace or bracelet, how nice it is to be able to wear it and show them that you really do appreciate them for what they've done for you too. And I love getting all those little cards and drawings for my children, grandchildren. I'm going to bring it to my heat over here just for a little bit because the cream cheese um, is a little cool. I, I didn't keep it out at room temperature long enough and the butter wasn't out long enough either. So it's no big deal. You just kind of bring it on the heat a little bit until it all melts together. And then what I would do is just serve it right to them in, in their little favorite bowls. All the different size and shape bowls I would have for every one of them. And then I would always top it with some more, of course, Pecorino Romano cheese. It wasn't enough inside. We have to make it look like snow on the top of the bowls. So what I'm going to do today, though, I'm taking it a little step further. I am going to put it in a buttered casserole because what I did today was I only made a half of a pound. Looks like a lot here, but it's not. It's just a half a pound of pasta. And I am, I need to just keep stirring this because we don't want that to be sticking on us. And so what I'm going to do is I melted a half a stick of butter here. And I've got about a cup of panko breadcrumbs here. And we're just going to toss these together. Just so that we have a nice topping. Because normally I would just serve it to them. But now I put it into here. I'm going to bake it in my oven around 350, 375, about 20 minutes, maybe a half an hour. And this little uh, added panko 
gives my recipe another twist and it gives it that nice crunch. You always want to put many dimensions in a dish. And macaroni and cheese is all soft and creamy and yummy. Nothing wrong with that, folks. But you know, if you've got a little crunch every now and then, that really adds uh, a good dimension as well as the flavor. So, you know, we're all about texture. We're all about flavors. We're all about smells. It's nice to have all of our senses going when we're eating together around the table. There we go. So we've got our buttered panko. And let's see, this is just about, yep, let's see. Yeah, here we go. That is all nicely incorporated. I'm going to turn my stove off before I forget. And I'm going to turn it in my dish here. My little round casserole, which I'm probably blocking the view. There we go. And then we're just going to decorate the top with our buttered panko to give it that added dimension of flavor and texture that we will enjoy sitting around the table together. My mac and cheese, I took it out of the oven. It's nicely browned on top from the panko. And I baked it in there probably 25 minutes. We're going to just take a little bit out. Mm. It was bubbling nicely. And you know, one thing I wanted to say, there we go. There's a nice healthy amount with a perfect crunch topping. It got nice and browned. And what I wanted to say was that um, before I put all the cheeses in, when I was adding the cheeses, I got an idea that if you wish, you could take a cup of cottage cheese and add that into your macaroni as well. And then maybe put another half a cup of your half and half. Try it. You'll get more protein out of it. And cottage cheese is a really nice cheese to eat because it is very high in protein and it's not like your normal uh, pressed cheeses. I gotta taste this. Mm. Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Mm. All the flavors of the cheese melt together. They're inside the, the noodles because they have holes. And that added crunch just makes it delightful. So if you would like this recipe, please go to my, my uh, website at memorablefooddishes.com and enjoy Mimi's famous mac and cheese.